So uh, just, I, I know you, everybody put their hands up already as to who are entrepreneurs in the audience, but can I just get a, a show of hands for people that are actively fundraising right now? Wow, okay, a lot. So I'll tell you a funny story that happened to me this morning. Uh, um, Brian put us up on uh, the Pollock Calls at the University of Edinburgh, and, uh, and I went this morning to grab breakfast, and I was, you know, I was reminded of, of my days you know, in college where you walk into the cafeteria with your tray and you just, you have all your food with you and you know, this, you just walk out from the food line and you're standing there like, where do I sit? And you, you know, you see that one table, you're like, I don't want to sit there. And then you look at people looking at you from over there and they're like, I don't want that guy to sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same thing with the VCs and entrepreneurs. You're like, who do I talk to for money? And then the, and the VCs are like, I don't want to talk to that guy. And so it's the same thing. Um, and so I thought that maybe that's kind of what the talk should be about, is how is it that VCs, the people that are sitting at the table maybe, if you want to pick it in that diagram, how is it that you go talk to? How is it that you find the group of people you want to socialize with? Who are the people you want to talk to? So um, my name is Carlos. Uh, I'm a partner at Seed Camp. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Seed Camp later, but I'll just get right into it. So they say it takes three times for a message to sink in. So I'm going to say it three times. Uh, all investors are not the same. Do your homework. And fundraising is like dating. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, last time I was here at the Turing Festival, I went into a lot of detail as to these top three points. Um, if I have time or whatever, we can go through to more detail, maybe over coffee or whatever. But I'm just going to quickly summarize them because they're going to become relevant as we start discussing how different investors look at these three things. And then the fourth one I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, as an additional addendum. So first of all, the company's market size. We all know that everyone wants to know how big your market is, right? Everyone, that's kind of an obvious thing. But what's not so obvious is the fact that the market size is not made up of just who is buying your product, but also who your potential acquirers. So if you have no potential acquirers in, in a market, it's very hard for a VC to exit. Now, the potential acquirers in a market might have a market cap or uh, a, a enterprise value of a certain amount, which limits their ability to sell, to buy your company. So if, let's say, the only acquirer in, this, in the segment that your company's in can only buy companies at 20 million, and you come in with a plan that requires you to fundraise 10 million, the likelihood that your business is going to be acquired by the only acquirer available is very low. So an investor will likely pass. So you need to understand not only how big your opportunity is going to be, but who the key players are, what the M&A market is like. If you're going to go for an IPO, great. That's a whole different story, but you know, that's not so easy and not many companies do that. So your product, again, the product is one of these things that um, many investors will look at differently. Um, depending on what stage an investor is in, a product is something they just take for granted in the sense that it must be there, it must work, customers might like it. Whereas the earlier investors are willing to take some product risk. You know, at Seed Camp, we take a lot of product risk. Uh, most of the time I'm investing in minimal viable products, uh, pre-launch betas. Um, and the way that I make decisions is based upon how the design of the product is, is set up and the, the ethos of it, um, rather than just the, you know, what, what, what's actually there and how many people are using it. And the maturity and skills of your team are, are components uh, that are quite obvious, but basically if you have the skills necessary for your business to be successful, that f plays in your favor, even if you don't have the experience of being a serial entrepreneur. The economics of the deal are basically, are you priced too expensive? Are you asking for too much money relative to how big your opportunity is? These are things that investors will make a decision on. Now, let me go quickly to the next slide. How am I doing on time? Good. All right. Well, because I said all investors are not the same, let's first look at all the different phases a company goes through. Concept, design, product, market validation, market scale, growth, expansion, and maybe an exit of some sort, either to public market to another company. Now, let's look at how much money that means. This is typically the amount of money that is required for each one of these stages. Now, if you add them up, that's the amount of money raised in the lifetime of a company that goes in IPO. It's probably about right. It's an average, but it gives you an idea. Now, where we had this discussion about where, let's say, Scottish uh, uh, ecosystem is, maybe it caps out where that 
uh, dotted line is. Maybe that's where it ends. And then you have to go west for this other stuff. Well, that's okay. Um, you just have to be aware of this. You need to under understand who your investor are, who they are, what they operate like, what are their interests. Where we sit, for example, Seed Camp, we're in this 50K range here. And these things determine the economics for the investor. As I mentioned before, if you are a Series B investor, for example, or a Series A, Series B investor, and you're putting in 10 million in a company, your company needs to exit somewhere around 100 million for them to, to do something with that, with that money, for them to like, consider that a nice return. So it predicates what kind of investors you can talk to. Um, this, this is just to show you which is generally considered VC. Um, and we could argue whether or not, maybe during the panel, whether or not that exists in Scotland or not, but that is the bit that we've, a lot of people, are, and we were talking about earlier in the panel, is does that exist in Europe in enough volume to merit uh, companies continuing to look here? I will say one thing, the best companies always get funding. If you look at Klarna in, in, Nor um, in Sweden, those guys got funding from Sequoia. They flew over basically and said, look, this is a killer company. We want to put money in. So if the best companies get funded. The best companies get funded, but it's not always easy. Um, so so the, the second thing is do your homework. Doing your homework means don't go talk to an investor not knowing who you're talking to. I mean, this is like the biggest waste of time for everyone. This is like going out and sitting next to the drama students when you're a CS major. You're not going to be able to talk about anything. You know, you need to know how old the fund is. Are they investing? Like, say, let's look. You're raising for money from a, a seed stage. You're not going to go talk to somebody who's got one year left in their fund. Funds usually are ten-year life cycles. Um, if they've got one year left, they're probably not even investing. If they're like five years left, they might be doing lower risk type deals. Um, look at the fund size. If it's a fund size of 500 million, it's a massive fund. Unless they have a specific pool allocated for seed investment, you're wasting your time talking to them because they need to move so much more money and it takes the same amount of time of a partner to spend on one deal of 10 million that it does for one of 50,000, they're not going to do it. So again, you're wasting time. Understand the fund focus sector. Are you talking to somebody who's really interested in clean tech? Well, what, you're wasting your time with them. Understand whether you're talking to an associate or a partner. Now, don't dismiss associates. They're the doorway into the, the whole fund. But understand, for example, do they work in conjunction? Do, they, do, do you need to have a meeting with a partner and associate together to know that it's moving forward? Just understand the dynamics. Understand who will sit on your board. Like when you have this conversation with them, say, like, are you guys going to appoint a third party onto my board or is it you? And sort of understand whether or not that person is going to be adding any value. Um, understand how long it's going to take for the process of the investment committee to, to go from when you first have your first meeting to when you get the money. Sometimes some VC funds have multi-stage uh, investment processes where they have a first meeting, then they have a partner meeting, then they have an investment committee, and you might be waiting a long time for your money to come in the door because it might take six to eight months between their first meeting and the subsequent meetings between everyone involved before the deal is done. Um, the next thing is familiarize yourself with the legal process. If you haven't looked at the Seed Summit term sheets, which are online and that are free, then you're really doing yourself a disfavor. Familiarize yourself with what a term sheet looks like so that you're not sitting there arguing with your investor about stuff that is considered relatively standard. Uh, seed Camp um, uh, spearheads the SeedSummit.org initiatives, 27 VC funds that support it, and it has pretty much standard terms. Um, so, to the fun bit, fundraising is like dating. If you keep that in mind, as you go through your fundraising, you'll actually, it'll actually help you quite a lot. First of all, if you don't go to parties, you'll never meet anyone. Well, you gotta network. You gotta get out there, meet the right people, connect to the right people, they'll help you connect to other people and so forth. You'll kiss a lot of frogs, meaning you'll waste a lot of time with a lot of people that you don't necessarily feel are gonna get you anywhere. You'll get a lot of no's, and you'll get a lot of no's. This should not deter you. I don't think it deters anyone in their dating life, so why should it deter you in your fundraising life? You'll likely meet through a friend, and usually it'll be somebody you've known for a while. This is somebody, this is a way that validates it for a VC. If a VC receives an introduction of a company from a validated source, the likelihood that you're gonna get funding goes up like 95% or something really significant like that. Um, if you suck at dating, try a dating service. But 
in this case, it would be an advisor or something like Seed Camp, where basically I help you meet a lot of people, uh, let's say when we do our US trip, so that you know who to speak to based upon your attributes in your company. The first person you're likely to meet isn't necessarily the best of you. We all have fallen in love with the wrong people in the past. And well, the same thing can happen with angels. You sometimes go and you meet somebody and it doesn't end up being the right person. They, they give you the wrong strategic advice or they don't, they don't give you the money when you need it. They argue with tranches with you. So keep in mind, as the more people you meet, the more mature your view becomes of what makes a good and a bad investor. And the golden similarity between dating and uh, fundraising is the more options you have, the better your final choice will be. Create market dynamics. The likelihood that you're going to have a better deal comes from having multiple choices. So just to wrap up, who are we? I'm one of two partners from Seed Camp, um, which is a micro VC fund. Uh, basically, we work in the way that we give 50,000 euros to um, companies for 8 to 10% of their equity but we include them into a mentoring program um, where we take them to the U.S. trip, for example, for four weeks in the U.S. to meet investors, mentors, uh, potential customers and partners in New York, Silicon Valley, Boston, San Diego, L.A., Seattle, Austin, and they meet pretty much everyone in Sand Hill Road. And this is the kind of access that's very, very hard to get if you're from Europe. Um, so we, as I mentioned, we, we invest. We also have two initiatives, Seed Hack and Seed Summit, which I told you about in the term sheets. And right now, we currently have 70 plus companies and 2,000 plus mentors. Um, we have this 70 plus companies that we've invested in so far really is where the core value of Seed Camp comes from. Because no matter how much mentoring I give to the companies individually or our mentors give the companies uh, during our events or during our learning days or a US trip or all the things that we organize, the biggest value comes from having 70 plus companies assume two founders per. So we're talking at least 140 people plus all their employees on our social network that's private just to seed camp companies helping each other out and everything from tech to business questions, legal questions and everything like that. So it's like, have, it's like being a student in the best MBA program in the world where you get to ask your students, uh, your, your fellow peers for, for questions. So that's it for me.